Good afternoon everyone, this is Chapter 4, Bar Equipment. In this module, you will be familiarized with the bartender's working environment, the underbar, back bar, and equipment. One key to good bar design is known as the one-step rule. The bartender at his or her pouring station should be able to make 90% of all drinks ordered by taking no more than one step from the central point of the station. This chapter will help you plan complete pouring station, choose among various methods of measuring and pouring liquors, choose among various methods of pouring carbonated mixers, determine the kind of ice needed for a given bar and the size of ice machine, install required equipment for washing glasses, provide for special needs of drop beer service, determine the space needed for refrigerations, dry storage, liquor stock, and glassware. Assemble the hand tools and equipment needed to mix, serve drinks, and prepare garnishes. Select glasswares appropriate to the drinks to be served. Choose a cash register or point of sale POS system that works well for your operation. When Abby Lincoln was selling whiskey back in 1830s, he did not use much equipment at all. In fact, his customers often bought their own mason jars into Abby's general store in New Salem, Illinois, and Abby would pour whiskey out of the barrel top into the jars. Earlier in the colonial taverns, drinks were poured in heavy glass decanters into tumblers, mugs, and tan cards. Mixed drinks were steered with a toddy stick, an early form of muddler, or the locker head, a metal bar on a long handle heated in an open fire, then thrust into the mug or punch bowl to steer a hot toddy or flip, an old-fashioned drink that usually contains an egg and or a cream. Along with the beverage equipment, there might have been a dice box. People would roll dice to see who would pay for the drinks. In the salons of the Old West, customers poured their own whiskey neat from the bottle set on the counter by the bartender. By the mid-1800s, hotel bars were serving mixed drinks, open with ice that was scraped, cheap, or pounded from the large cakes transported from frozen lakes or rivers. By 1890, a hotel might have at its own ice machine, which could make a large block of ice in 15 hours. Mixed drinks found tools for mixing, bar spoon, measures, shakers, and shuttlers bat bottles. The cash register was first used in a tavern in 1879. Most of today, today's bar equipment can be traced to post-prohibition days. It fits handily into compact space and is designed for both high-speed individual service and easy manipulations by that master of dexterity and showmanship, the bartender. We will take a closer look at this equipment. Several interrelated components of the pouring station each requires some portions of square footage, beverage dispensing, beer dispensing and storage, ice making and storage, and glass washing and storage, as well as a blender, bar tools and cash registers, and a printer. As a general rule, plan to spend 1,000 US dollars per linear put of bar to outfit it with equipment. With the exceptions of the cash register and printer, all equipment must meet local health department requirements which typically follow the sanitation standards set by National Sanitation Foundations International NSFI. Equipment meeting these standards carries the NSFI seal shown in figure 4.1. The major pieces of underbar equipment have a stainless steel surface. This makes them durable and easy to clean and sanitize. Stainless steel stands up to the hard sheet. Chemicals yet looks good and can be polished to an attractive shen. Work surfaces supporting underbar equipment are the standard 30 inches high with a depth of 16 inch to the box splash at the rear. Units from the same manufacturer fit side by side and give the appearance of being continuous. Each piece of equipment either stands on legs that are 6 or more inches high for access of plumbing and ease to clean, of cleaning or is flushed with the floor. The legs have bullet feet tapered and resemble bullets again and for easy, for easy cleaning. 
All these features are NSFI standards that fit are adjustable to accommodate an even flooring. Figures 4.2 and 4.3 show the underbar and back bar of the hotel bar shown in Chapter 3, Figure 3.11. They serve the hotel's cocktail lunch, dining room, and coffee shop from three stations. The stations at the center of the per Figure 4.2, where you see ice bean, battle wheels, and condimentary, is the pouring station used to serve customers seated or standing at the front of bar. It also is used as the pickup stations for cocktail waitresses serving the lunch. In the bottom right, in this figure, where you see the second condiment tray on the counter, is the pickup stations for the dining room seen from the waiter side. This station also is used to serve customers seated or standing at the bar. The third station, in the top left, serves the coffee shop. It is also so shown from the waiter side in the bottom right of figure 4.3. All three stations are set up in the morning and a single bartender works from all three, according to where the calls for drinks come in. Two bartenders are on duty for the busy late afternoon and evening periods. Serving personal garnish the drinks at the pickup station, notice the condiment trays on the bar top, O in, in both figures, a shelf below on the server's side holds ashtrays, napkins, and other server supplies. Railing M set these pickup stations of from customer use. There are also return stations for use classes. Not, notice the waste dumps below L. The centerpiece of any pouring station is an ice chest or ice bin with or without battle wheels. Usually with a speed rail attached to the front, this piece of equipment is variously known as a cocktail station, cocktail unit, or beverage center, or colloquially, a jockey box. Figure 4.4 shows a complete cocktail station. Its centerpiece is a 30-inch ice chest with a sliding or removable cover. The front of the unit is 3.5 foot bottle rail, speed rail, with a shorter hands-on rail on the front. On the left of the ice chest is a double row of condiment cups and used to hold garnishes, which are chilled by the ice. Often such equipments has bottle wheels rather than condiment cups. They are used to keep juices and prepare bricks cold. On the right hand side of the unit is a blender station, essentially as recessed shelves for for the stations blender and mixers with a special dump sinks and faucet behind the machines a glass shelves and a towel rack complete their unit figure 4.2 and 4.3 display all these elements in slightly different conf configurations as the three pouring station in addition to battle rays on a cocktail station there is a double rail on the hand sink not shown in any of these pictures is another type of ice chest with a drip fighter, which enables stations to have both cube and crushed ice. A speed rail typically contains the most frequently poured liquors, usually scotch, bourbon, and blended whiskey, as well as gin, vodka, rum, tequila, and brandy. The standard variety changes with the area of the clientele. The linker supply at the bartender stations is known collectively as well, and the brands used to there are called well brands, house brands, and pouring brands. These are the brands that the house pours when a drink is ordered by tip type rather than by brand name. Popular popular call brands, brands customer call for by name, Vermont, a couple of bottles of house wines, and the current favorites is linkers are also set up within each reach. Additional linkers, more called brands linkers, premium brandies are typically displayed on the back bar. Many bars have tired linker shelves containing reserved supplies as part of the back bar itself, such as in figure 4.3. Let us now move on to the dispensing beverage. As each station of the bar is the Cobra Gun that dispenses the carbonated mixes, see figure 4.5. It consists of a head with a nozzle and push buttons that delivers plain water and carbonate, carbonated mixes, one per button such as club soda, tonic water, soft drinks, and Collins mix. 
whatever half dozen you choose. Behind the scenes are bulk of supplies and concentrated syrups and a tank of carbon dioxide under pressure. Syrup lines run from each syrup supply to the underbar and through an ice cold plate on the bottom of each ice chest made especially to quick chill them. The carbon dioxide line goes to the motor-driven carbonator under the ice chest where the carbon dioxide is mixed with fil filtered water. A carbonated water line then runs from the carbonator through the cold plate, as does a line with plain filtered water. Finally, all the syrups and water li lines run through the flex hose, which is flexible metal hose, to the head of the gun. Here, the syrup mixes with carbonated water in 5 is to 1 ratio at the touch of the proper button. Or plain chilled filtered water is dispensed. Together, all this is known as a post-mix dispensing system because the soda is mixed at the time of service. Are also pre-mix system in which the complete beverage is supplied in a bulk containers that have already been mixed at the manufacturing plant. In a premix system, a separate supply of carbon dioxide is needed to propel and product from the container to this dispensing head. The premix lines from the bulk supplies are run through ice or a cold plate to cool the product. A good post mix or premix drink should be cooled to between 37 degree Fahrenheit to 42 degree Fahrenheit in order for it to maintain good carbonation. Premix systems are seldom used today's bars, with the exceptions of portable bars for special occasions used, because Promix postmix systems are far cheaper per drinks, about two fifths the cost, and are much more compact, about fifth the size. Than pre premix system, they are generally the better choice. You will want to establish and maintain high quality standards for your carbonated beverages. The so is a way to control their cost and to ensure that the drinks made with them will be satis satisfactory to the customers. Four prim primary factors are involved in dispensing carbonated beverages. Here are the four primary factors involved in dispensing carbonated beverages. First is the water quality. Carbonated drinks are about 80% water, not even counting the ice that may be put into a mixed drinks. If the water does not taste good, neither will your beverages. Filtered water is requirement in most areas. The second one would be ingredient temperature. Water needs to be very cold to make a good soda. Otherwise, it melts the ice in the drinks too quickly. The optimum temperature is close to the freezing point of water take 32 degree Fahrenheit and the chilling equipment in your system must be sufficient to provide this. Keep in mind that heat accelerates the aging process of carbonated drink syrups and mixers. As a result, it is important that these items to be stored in cool areas, ideally at temperatures that do not exceed 65 degree Fahrenheit and where they are protected from direct sunlight. The third one would be mix ratio. Correcting proportion drinks contain the right amounts of syrups, water, and carbon dioxide, and no more. Any variations will affect the taste of the drinks. You should regularly taste test each and every liquid that comes out on your Cobra gun. Amazingly, few bartenders remember to do so until custo customers complain. My drink is flat. It smells the liquid as you would find wine. Sip a bit of it, then hold it it in your mouth to get the full impact of what flavor and carbonation. As one would be carbonation, a good carbonator, the pump that takes the carbon dioxide from the tank and injects into the water, syrup mix, provides just the right amount of fist to the product. This piece of equipment must be sized to your bar overall drinks volume so there is no fluctuations in the amount of carbonation during peak demands period. Also, liquid is improper Fairly sealed with stored and carbon dioxide containers can lose their effervescence. They should be stored in cool temperatures. So, good day. Ang topic ko ngayon ay automated pouring system. So, ito yung parang isa-set mo na lang siya. Yung nakasystem na nga siya. Yung halimbawa kapag, nag, kapag ikaw yung, kapag nagpo-pour ka talaga, 
na merong masasayang, merong natatapon. Kadalasan talaga merong natatapon. Lahat ng nag uh, na lahat ng barman, mer- kadalasan talaga merong natatapon yun. Merong nasasayang. So, hindi naman yun may iwasan. <coughs> so, dito sa pouring system na to, uh, mas mapapadali niya yung gawain, eh, mas mapapabilis. So, mawala na yung masasa- wala nang masasayang, wala nang matatapon. So, isaset mo na lang siya. And then, kontrolado, kontrolado niya yung dami, yung, yung timpla, then yung mga sukat. Mga sukat niya. Then, syempre, makakatipid din sa labor. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-apply ng maraming barman. So, kahit isa or dalawa, kayang-kaya na. So, and then, ano, syempre, consistent yung lasa. And mabilis din yung inventory. So, may disadvantage din ito. Yung disadvantage nito yung nawawala yung interaction ng guest and yung barman. So, nawawala yung pag-entertain, yung yung pagkipintuhan. Then, yung yung kasama na rin yata dun yung pagpiplayer, yung pagpitricks. And, syempre, kadalasan, Merong nai-stack na, na siyempre, nagiging sanhi ng pag-iba ng lasa. So, punta naman tayo sa mixer and blenders. So, yun, yun lang. Uh, uh, meron, na, meron, meron ako mga picture niya na ipapakita ko sa, ipapakita ko sa PowerPoint. So, yun lang. Pag sinabi naman kasi natin mixer and blender, lalo na yung blender, talagang pag sinabi natin blender, ah yun, ah yun. Kanilas na nagamit yun, yung mga nagsishake, yan. Yung blender. Then yung mixer naman, ang pagkakaiba nila ay yung itsura. Yun yung parang yung sa mixer, nandun yung shaker. Nandun yung shaker. Sa so, nasa screen yun. Nasa PPT, nasa PPT, nasa PPT ko yun. So, makikita nyo na lang dyan. So, dako naman tayo sa glassware. So, pag sinabi naman natin glassware, ito yung mga cocktail glass, yung mga basong karaniwang ginagamit sa bar, yan. So, steamware. Ano naman pag sinabi natin yung steamware? So, pag sinabi naman natin yung steamware, ito yung, ito yung cocktail glass, yung parang pa, pabisya ang itsura, pabis. Ayan. Pabiyang, pabisya ang itsura, pin, meron siyang payat na tangkay na merong bilog sa baba. Ayan. Then, yung cocktail glass na yun, yung, o yung steamware na yun, ay kailangan or required sa kanila or kailangan na nakalagay dun sa para para siyang para siyang sabitan para siyang sabitan na naka upside down naka upside down siya uh, ang uh, kung tawagin ay green boards green boards Then, siyempre, dapat laging malinis, laging, laging malinis, walang alikabo, walang dumi, yun lang. So, next po ay, next po natin ay, tinatawag na rotary glass washer. So, dito naman, may dalawang component eh. Ito yung, ang isa ay chemical and ang isa ay yung heat. So sa ito yung mga ano, ito lang yung mga inilalagay yung para nagdi-disinfect. Nagdi-disinfect mo, nagdi-disinfect ka lang ng mga baso. Nagdi-disinfect mo lang. Pag pag heat na kung sa heat naman, kung sa heat mo ilalagay, ang temperature niya ay 180 to 140. Then dun sa <coughs> chemical sanitizing naman ay mer- mayroon naman ipapakita sa PPT nakalagay, sa P- nakalagay naman doon sa PPT 
sanitizing solution type, yan. finalized temperature, yung mga temperature. Yung sanitized solution type, yung may chlorine, yung iodine, yan, yung mga ganun. So, yun lang. Salamat po. Good afternoon everyone. Now let's talk about refrigeration needs. The first refrigeration equipment is the glass froster. It is a top opening freezer that chills glasses at temperatures around 0 degree Fahrenheit. When glasses are removed from the freezer, they sport refreshing coats of frost. Glasses and mugs placed in a glass froster must be dry to begin with. Otherwise, a thin coat of ice will form on them. Then when a drink is poured into the glass or mug, it might stick to the lip of the drinker or the ice might dilute the drink. So the finished product of the glass froster is a cold glass with a blur and frosting effect on the surface. Alternatives for chilling glasses for straight-up cocktails and frozen and ice cream drinks include Number one, if you have refrigerator space, you can use it to frost a wet glass without making ice. Another alternative is to ice a glass by hand with cube ice just before the drink is poured. By doing these alternatives, you can achieve the desired chilled glass without the glass froster. Besides, the goal here is to have the cold glass for cold drinks. The next refrigeration equipment is the bottle chiller or bottle cooler. It is available for quick chilling wines. There are reach in or reach down units, some well mounted with glass fronts that have the additional advantage of showing off wines inside. The advantage of bottle chiller is that minimum inventory of white wines may be kept under refrigeration close to the bar area. While the rest can be stored elsewhere until needed, bottle chillers can be used in wait stations too. This equipment is very useful because sometimes due to lots of guests, we need our bottle of drinks to get chilled instantly. It is convenient, it is very appealing, it displays the drink while chilling it. This is the cold storage in the form of an underbar refrigerator. It is a requirement for most bars. This unit's miniatures of standard commercial refrigerators range in size from 60 to 90 inches in length of the correct depth and height to fit the underbar or back bar space. They provide from 5 to 15 cubic feet of storage space. Although this is not much, it is enough for common bars, perishables such as garnishes and dairy products. Underbar refrigerator is meant to be in underbar or back bar. It is very accessible especially for cocktail making which needs garnishes the most. Moving on, ice and ice machines. Every bar operation has an ice maker or ice machines. Some have more than one. If the bar is large enough, the ice maker can be part of the underbar or back bar, but often this is not possible. If the ice maker must be installed elsewhere, be sure to design the bar space so that there is plenty of room for ice storage. The typical ice bin is 24 to 36 inches in length and its capacity varies from 100 pounds for 24 inches bin to 150 pounds per 36 inches bin. This machine can make cube ice instantly and is necessary for bars because ice gives the appeal to the drink. Imagine a beer or cocktail without ice. Di ba boring? There are factors to consider when deciding on the type and size of cube ice to use. The first one is the placement. Cubes should pack well into the glass but not appear to. The shape of the cube also determines how much of its surface touches the liquid and therefore how quickly it works to chill the drink. Cube ice should be used for pure spirits such as single malt scotches and plain bourbon on the rocks. Cube ice chills the liquor without melting too quickly to water it down. The first consideration is displacement, meaning that the cube ice to use is not melting so fast because when it melts, it becomes water and that water can dilute or weaken the drink. The next consideration is clarity. I should be completely clear, made with pure sanitary drink water that produces no off taste, color, or odor. This includes not tasting or smelling like water purifying chemicals. For this reason, distilled water makes the clearest and most neutral tasting ice. So meaning the ice should be clear so we need to use distilled water from sources that pass sanitation requirement. In addition, if we use water from other sources, it may be contaminated. Another consideration is density. 
How hard or soft the ice is frozen determines how quickly it interacts with the drink. The cubes also should not be so soft that they stick together in the bin. Local temperature and humidity affect density, the location of the ice maker in your operation, and its temperature setting. The harder the ice is, the longer it takes to melt. So, consider putting the ice maker in a place where there is an absence of humidity to achieve the perfect density of the ice. Kailangan natin ng yelo na mabilis magpalamig pero matagal matunaw. Moving on, keeping ice clean. Although not often thought of as food item, cube ice is consumed by your customers and it needs to stay as clean and sanitary as anything else you serve. Clean ice starts with clean machine. Cleaning and sanitizing your ice machine means removing built-up mineral deposits, algae, and slime from the machine's part. According to Frank Murphy, the National Training Director of GCS Services, this process should be completed at least every six months. Cleaning and sanitizing is essential to make sure the very delicate cycle of making ice is not interrupted and that every cube looks the same as every other cube, Murphy says. Use the following tips for keeping your machine and ice clean between big cleanings. Number one is always have stop wash their hands before removing ice and always have them use a plastic scoop. The second, keep the plastic ice scoop clean. Wash it frequently with neutral cleanser and always rinse thoroughly. So yun, it is necessary for F and B industry that we consider sanitation. Kailangan laging malinis ang sarili at ang gamit to prevent contamination. Next, do not store food and beverage items or containers in the ice bin. It is not a refrigerated storage space and should not act one. It may be because if we store these things in the ice bin, pwedeng may bacteria na maggrow sa loob from these things. Kaya nga merong tayong hiwalay na refrigerator for beverage and food for orderliness and cleanliness purposes. Next, clean the bin liner frequently with a neutral cleaner rinsing thoroughly. Prevent corrosion on the exterior of your machine by wiping it occasionally with a clean soft cloth. To remove oil and dirt, use a damp cloth with neutral cleanser. Check the air filter on air-cooled models at least twice per month. If the filter get clogged, use warm water and the neutral cleaner to wash it out. Check the condenser if your machine has one once a year and clean it with a brush or a vacuum cleaner. More frequent cleaning may be required depending on the location of your ice machine. In short explanation, we use neutral cleaner because other cleaner has strong smell which are hard to remove and might damage the material of the equipment. In addition, we use soft cloth to prevent scratch in the equipment coating. Moving on, ice quality is important enough to a bar business that if possible, ice should be dumped out at the end of the workday and fresh ice made for the next day. A bartender streak from Santee Magazine when faced with old ice and no time for to make fresh, it can be quickly rinsed with warm water just before use. Another explanation is that old ice may absorb odor and it becomes stale, meaning hindi na kaaya-aya kung ilalagay pa sa drink. When we talk about the trick from Santi Magazine, one warm water can melt the surface of the ice that absorb the odor, so it can be used but not advisable. Now, let's talk about how ice making machine works. Ice making machines are refrigeration units. A pump inside an ice making machine circulates water from a tank. You will want a machine with good filtration system to ensure pure water and minimal buildup of minerals and chlorine found in most drinking water. The water runs through tubing to a freezer assembly which freezes it into a single sheet of ice. The frozen sheet is then forced through a screen to produce cube ice or crush to produce crushed ice. Different of screens produce different sizes and shapes of cube ice. Each machine makes only one type of size, but in some machines, you can adjust the cube size. Crushed ice can be also made by running cube ice through an ice crusher. Another types of machine produces crushed or cracked ice from scratch instead from cube ice. Both machines make small random size pieces and hard ice. Some drinks call for crushed and cracked ice which is also used in making frozen drinks. Next is the flake ice machine or flaker. Produces a soft snow-like ice that is used mostly for keeping beverage or cold. Flake ice is suitable only for frozen drinks, not as a standard bar ice because 
in an ordinary mixed drink, it melts quickly, dilutes the drink, and tends to create a water cup on the surface, which makes drink taste weak. Shaved ice made by machines that shapes ice off the large blocks is similar to flake ice. It is not soft and opaque and has the same uses. The difference between the three is that crushed ice looks like rocks, flake ice looks like a small sheets of paper, while shib ice is the smaller version of the flake ice which sometimes used in ice cream. Next, determining the ice maker size and other factors. Ice machine size refers to the number of pounds of ice it can produce in 24 hours. Today's underbars models are so compact that even an 22 inch wide machine can make 500 pounds of ice per day do the basic ice needs calculation try this number one estimate the usage for one full week by multiplying the number of guests to be served that week by three pounds per guest let's say we have 700 guests served that week so 700 times three pounds of ice the answer will be 2100 divide the result by seven days per week so 2100 divided by seven there will be 300 daily number of ice will need the next step multiply that figure by 1.25 to add the bit extra output so 300 times 1.25 the answer will be 375 if your average is not constant because, for example, you know that Fridays and Saturdays, your place will be swamp estimated an additional amount for those days and include it in the total. This way, you know there will be enough ice even for your busiest days. So, moving on, where to put the ice maker? Put the ice maker in a well-ventilated area to ensure that it functions properly and that the area meets the same sanitation standards as the bar itself behind this is because when humidity is present in the area where the ice maker is located it affects the density of the ice and the speed of the refrigeration next what to do if the incoming water supply is warm consider adding a lit chiller to ice making system it collects cold water that would no normally drain away from the ice maker and recirculates it in the series of copper coil to chill fresh water on its way into ice maker to be frozen next is the ice maker maintenance the important maintenance task regarding ice making machine is to clean the units compressor and condenser coils according to manufacturer's direction keeping them free of dirt and grease allows better air circulation the coils hold refrigerants which pressurize and torn from liquid to vapor and back again during the cooling process since 1990 the u.s environmental protection agency or epa has promoted a change from old style refrigerants that were taught to deplete the ozone layer to newer ones called hydrofluorocarbons hfc's and hydrochlorofluorocarbons hcfc's what this means for the bar or restaurant operators is that there are strict rules for a type of refrigeration repair. If you fail to follow the rule, you will be in violation of the Federal Clean Air Act and you can be fined. So, use only repair technicians who are EPA certified since they know how to dispose all the refrigerants properly. In addition, look for underwriters labor laboratories or UL label on any new ozone safe refrigerants that is added to your machine dun sa old models na re refrigerators they are using chlorofluorocarbon na refrigerants which is also called the CFC so pinagbawal na yun kasi nakaka affect siya at nakakasira siya ng ozone layer natin. So, ex essentials for drop beer service. A drop beer serving system consists of keg or half, or half keg of beer. The beer box where the keg is stored, the standard or top, the line between the keg and the standard and the carbon dioxide tank connected to the keg with another line. The beer box, also called a top box, is a refrigerator designed especially to hold a keg and, or half keg of beer. The proper system temperature of 36 degree Fahrenheit to 38 degree Fahrenheit. Generally, the beer box is located right below the standard which is mounted on the 
bar top so the line between keg and standard is as short as possible if more than one brand of drop beer is served each brand has its own system keg line and standard either in its own beer box or in a box shared with another brand so this is the beer keg if i'm not mistaken pahiga yan ginagamit as nilalagyan ng top or poset or dispenser para makakuha ng beer Next, let's talk about storage equipment. From the outside of the back bar refrigerator, looks just like a dry storage cabinet. Some back bar units are half refrigerators and half dry storage. Bar size refrigerators are tested for sanitation and temperature control by NSFI International. So you should look for NSFI seal when making your selection. The refrigerator should be able to hold foods at temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Back bar refrigerators, cabinets, store supplies, perishables in one section, and bottled beers and soft drinks in another section. To the right at the back bar is the dry storage cabinet for the bar towels, napkin, and other supplies. Reserved supplies of liquor are stored in a locked overhead cabinets above the front bar. Next, how refrigeration works. Refrigeration cycle is a process of removing heat from the refrigerated space. Next, refrigeration circuit is the system of equipment that makes the cycle possible. Successful refrigeration is a combination of temperature reduction, humidity, and circulation. To keep food at their peak, you need a refrigerator capable of cooling them to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So, pag hindi na lumalamig sa loob ng ref, the cycle is not working because refrigeration circuit may have a problem. Now, let's talk about what happens when you open the refrigerator door of that little underbars unit. First, opening the door immediately introduces warm air into the cold space. The warm air arises and is drawn toward evaporator coils made of copper. Inside the sealed evaporator coils is liquid refrigerant, the HFCs and HCFCs, which becomes vapor or gas. As it winds through the coils called the condenser, there it turns back into liquid. The amount of refrigerants flowing through the system is determined by expansion bulb, which is a small opening between the evaporator and the condenser. The more the surrounding air needs to be cooled, the more often refrigerants flow. Moving on, a cousin to the bar refrigerator is the horizontal bottle cooler. If you serve a lot of individual bottles or cans, this unit enables you to store them in a chilled bins with sliding top lids. The bottle cooler has the same small refrigeration system like ice makers, bar refrigerators, and bottle coolers require coil cleaning and periodic preventive maintenance. Servicing and re recharging with new refrigerant should be done only by an EPA certified repair person. Compare with vertical bottle cooler, which the door is in the front, horizontal bottle cooler door is on the top. It is just that they are the same in use but different in design. So this is the end of my presentation. This is Jessica Aranda. Thank you very much for listening and once again, good afternoon everyone.